Today is a day that I've decided to give a theme. I don't normally give themes, but I decided to give a theme. And the theme today is true education. I am one of those believers who was impressed to know that what the church needs today is greater light. They need to know the truth because it says that the truth will set you free. So just as an introductory, before we get into our song and our opening song and uh, prayer, I just want to read here from the book Education, page 13, under the caption, Source of an Aim of True Education. Our ideas of education take too narrow and too low a range. There is need of a broader scope, a higher aim. True education means more than the perusal, more than the perusal of a certain course of study. You know, we go to school and we endeavor to get into a certain course of study, all right? There's some of us who want to be mechanics. Some of us want to be lawyers. Some of us want to be accountants, etc., etc. So that's a specific course of study. True education means more than that, all right? He says, it has to do with the whole being and with the whole period of existence possible to man. It is the harmonious development of the physical and mental and the spiritual powers. It prepares the student or the disciple, disciple term, student. It prepares the student for the joy of service in this world for the higher joy of wider service in the world to come. And I say amen, praise the Lord for that. She continues now, says, the source of such an education is brought to view in these words of holy writ, pointing to the infinite one. Colossians 2, verse 3, says, in him, I hid all the treasures of wisdom. John 12, verse 13 says, He had counsel and understanding. That's important. So let us not forget that. Understanding is very important if you want to follow in the precepts of God. Because if you don't understand, what are you going to be following? You're creating something of yourself and for yourself. So understanding is very important. You heard the scripture reading. It was taken from the book of Jeremiah. All right. Um, can you put that scripture reading back on the thing? Jeremiah 9, verses 23 and 24. I just want to awaken us to a few things that inspiration has shared with us, that we must not have closed minds. It says, Thus said the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this. What? That he understand it. There's that word again. God wants us to understand. You cannot do anything without understanding. All right? You're like a blind man leading another blind man. And you know what the disaster of that will turn out to be, right? And know it me. That he understand it and know it me. Brethren, this is true education. 
This is true education. That I am the Lord that exercised loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. There's nothing in that that says, man, I tell you, that he exercised strife or pain or sickness. That exercised these things well in the earth. For in these things I delight, said the Lord. So don't you want to do things that God delights in? So these are the things we should be exercising. In the book, um, Consuls on Sabbath School Work, you know, page 34, inspiration says, new light will ever be revealed on the word of God. What's that again? New light will ever be revealed on the word of God to him who is in living connection with the son of righteousness. All right, now you see the word S-U-N. Jesus shines brighter than the sun, you know, to that extent, but he's the son of righteousness. And he says he exercises loving kindness and righteousness in the earth. For in these things, he delights. Say, so let no one come to the conclusion that there is no more truth to be revealed. The diligent, prayerful seeker for truth will find precious rays of light yet to shine forth from the word of God. Many gems are yet scattered that are to be gathered together to become the property of the remnant people of God. Brethren, you have no doubts. God has called this church here today for a specific reason. He wants to give us what others don't have. This is why we have the spirit of prophecy. He wants to give us what the others do not have. But he is only giving it to those who exercise the things that God loves. Righteousness, loving kindness, and judgment in the earth. For in these things do I delight. He says, too many minds, the origin of sin and the reason for its existence are a source of great perplexity. They are the work of evil with its terrible results of woe and desolation. And they question how all this can exist under the sovereignty of one who is infinite in wisdom, in power, and in love. So I'll pause there. Taking this extra five minutes to get. Just before we do the records, I just want to close off here and leave everything to just go and the lay activities department can do their thing. Oh, personal ministries. Same. You know, I was living in the old times, you know, when it used to be lay activities. All right. Volume, volume 8, and we, we're talking about true, true education. Volume 8, page 289, paragraph 2 says, The knowledge of God as revealed in Christ is the knowledge that all who are saved must have. It is the knowledge that works transformation of character. This knowledge received will recreate the soul in the image of God. It will impart to the whole being a spiritual power that is divine. Volume 5 says, God has commanded us, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And an inspired apostle said, declares that without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Holiness is agreement with God. By sin, the image of God in man has been marred and well nigh obliterated. That's what sin has caused. And then coming to know God now, to understand who he is, will bring you back into transformation of character. All right? Because you want to understand who God is so that you can 
exemplify that in your life. All right? He says, by sin, the image of God has been marred and well nigh obliterated. It is the work of the gospel to restore that which has been lost. And we are to cooperate with the divine agency in this work. So brothers and sisters, if you're going to take anything with you from what has been said and what has been shared even through the lesson study, this is all true education. There is no education apart from that knowing God and moving as God dictates for you to move. You need to understand that. All right? So you could go and get all your masters, all your doctorate, all your degrees. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't have Christ, who is the source of all wisdom and knowledge and understanding, you really have nothing. You're just an educated fool. So if you want to put what you understand and what you've learned from your um, tuition education, by all means, choose Christ. Let him give you the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to rightly apply. Now this time we're going to ask our teachers to mark their registers and take whatever notes is necessary. And I bid you all adieu. All right. <laughs>